five short presentations developed to help third sector organisations prepare a strong case for support and make better funding applications. The other topics covered in this series were project and business planning, getting things right for an application, evidencing needs, and the nuts and bolts of a funding application. These are all still available via the YouTube link. I'm Jackie Niven of Kincardineshire Development Partnership and today we're looking at monitoring and evaluation. We'll cover what is monitoring and evaluation, the difference between outcomes and outputs, the indicators, evaluation methods, collecting information and how you can use evaluation. So we're asking what is monitoring and evaluation? Why do we need to monitor and evaluate? And what's the difference between monitoring and evaluation? More often than not, organisations monitor and evaluate because a funder has asked them to do them, but it does have other benefits. It can help identify what has worked well and what didn't. It can help to plan current and future projects. You can build on good practice and avoid repeating mistakes. You can compare and share learning between projects and assess the extent to which your project has made good use of funds and demonstrate achievements to stakeholders. So let's look at the difference. Monitoring, that's systematically collecting information regularly and methodically against a plan. Targets should be set at the planning process and it should help to keep pro the project on track by providing regular feedback and alert you to any problems to, and help evaluate. Whereas evaluation is using the monitoring and other information collected to assess the effectiveness of the project, service or organisation. It should help the organisation reflect on and make valued judgement on what it's achieved towards its aims and objectives and identify where changes or improvements to the service may be required or where new projects could be developed. Moving on to outputs and outcomes, sometimes it's difficult to understand the difference between the two. We introduced some planning models in the first session and these are useful tools in helping to identify these. So what is the difference between an output and an outcome? Outputs are a means of achieving outcomes. So outputs are the actions taken, services delivered or products of the activity of the project and outcomes are the changes or differences you expect to, your project to make. And output indicators help assess the work generated by the project and show progress. And your outcome indicators, they help assess the changes that are taking place as a result of the project. We've used the SMART acronym before and just as your aims and objectives of your project need to be SMART, your indicators do need to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely. So what techniques or methods are there for monitoring and evaluation? You could ask questions, so use interviews, questionnaires, quizzes, focus groups, social media is useful for this. The take up rate, so keep a log of the number of users or number of inquiries or, and make sure you look at any gaps. Keep records, so have plans and minutes from meetings and reports. And observe, watch and record, but you mustn't be biased. Feedback, so you have a feelings tree or a graffiti wall or suggestion boxes. Again, you could use social media. And follow up on reviews, you know, choose a random sample of past users and ask them for some comments and their experiences. It's important to try and use different methods and be inventive and have a think about who, who your audience is and make sure anything that you do present is meaningful.
The following tables are a useful way of recording your outputs and outcomes and highlighting the indicators. The who, what, how, where and when, if you like. Once you've gathered your, your data, then take time and analyze the evidence. You know, do we have the evidence we need? Did the project achieve its outputs? You know, did the activities run as planned? Did we reach the target group? And what worked and what didn't? And sometimes things don't work, but then what did you learn from that? And then did the project achieve its outcomes? Did we make a difference? And if not, why not? And what have we learned? As we said earlier, often groups are monitoring and evaluating for funders, but make use of that information. So take time to consider it. You know, answers will feed into the planning process and help with further developments. This information will be useful for reporting, so it will be helpful for future funding. You could put it in your annual report, use it at meetings, write newspaper articles, put information on your website and inform your members through newsletters. And try not to fall into the trap of once it's done is just you know, forget about it. Try and learn about how well your monitoring and evaluation worked. Be proud of what you've done and found out evaluation is meant to be used. So to recap, Plan your monitoring and evaluation at the beginning. Use smart indicators. Think about what monitoring and evaluation methods you can use and use that information. It will help your organisation grow. Thank you for listening. I hope you found it useful. If your group or organisation is exploring ways to effectively capture the results of a project, help is available through your local rural partnership, third sector interface or local Aberdeenshire Council departments.